people, it's your boy the Kryptonian saying here, bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 467. I believe this is 467 or 467. And can't even lie to you, man. I thought Zoro was done at the end of the last chapter, and I totally misread that last panel. And the fight that ensues. When I tell you this was one of those fights. I was reading it and like I'm just in disbelief. Like I'm looking at the feats that are being shown, and it makes sense. Zoro's strong enough that the dude, with the help of Luffy, sliced the tsunami in half. And the fact that Brooks Zombie was able to go toe to toe with them like this, and just the shockwave enough made them think that it was a gunshot, and they're slicing through uh, the stone. You knew that this was going to be a pretty intense fight. But when this chapter opens up and Zoro is going blow for blow with this guy and Zoro's thinking to himself, he's using attacks meant to break swords. That's another thing when I read it. I was like, oh man, this is like another Kenshin moment because Kenshin fought somebody that had a similar fighting style. And I believe this would have been after Oda left Roroni Kenshin. But the other thing is when I read it, it reminded me of like when Inuyasha was using Tetsaiga and Shishomaru was attacking it with the intention of breaking it. And it's just so crazy at how Oda drew this fight because you have this one scene where Zoro takes both swords, he brings it down, and you're thinking, okay, where's this going? Because they keep blocking each other. And you get to one point where the actual roof itself is caving in and you're going... Did the shock waves of their attacks were they so powerful it's causing the roof to come in? And even Brooke is saying to himself, like, he never showed this power when he's fighting with me. And these two are evenly matched, which means that this fight's gonna be over very soon. And that's a very fair assessment because when you get into situations like that where you have two people and it isn't just sword play, it's anything in life. When you have two people who are relatively equal to each other. And they're in some type of competition. Whoever is the more skilled one. If we put everything on the table and say all things are equal. Whoever is the more skilled between the two. And has those intangibles that you can't teach. It's going to be the one who comes out on top. And that's what happened with Zoro. When the roof is coming down. You see both of them. They're using the attacks. They're just chopping everything up. Part of the roof slices off. Zoro and Brooks' uh, zombie, they jump up on the top of the roof. And they're fighting on the roof as it's sliding down, falling. And both of them have poor footing. And it makes sense because when you're swinging those swords, those swords are already heavy. I didn't realize how heavy swords were until I forgot where I was at. I was on vacation somewhere. And I went into this shop that had a whole bunch of swords. And I didn't. I actually picked up a katana. And I didn't know that katana was as heavy as it was. And so when you look at the swords that Zoro's using, some of them you can tell from the way that they're drawn, that some of these swords are pretty heavy. And to be able to use those types of swords and generate the type of force that they're generating without poor footing because when you're swinging it, it's just like swinging a baseball bat. you got to have good, you got to have your feet planted. you got to be in the right position. Otherwise, you don't get the full amount of force when you're using it and when Zoro is looking around like he's on the other side and he's chasing them and they're continuing to uh, swap blows up there you get this one moment where Zoro's jumping up in the air and they had just got done blocking each other's attacks Zoro goes in uses the one sword style Phoenix uh, I want to say it's Phoenix Blaze and what was really, really cool about this, it is the one sword style flying dragon blades. And what was really cool about this is the way that it was actually drawn. You see the flames catching fire and it's snaking its way up to uh, Ryuma, Brooks, uh, zombie. And when that happens and you see his body just coated in the flames and you see Zoro just kind of floating back down, I thought that Zoro got KO because of the way he was drawn. And it's more he had a look of contentment on his face because Zoro at that point just looked like he had a really good sparring session with somebody or to take it a Excuse me, take a step further. Zoro just looked like he's got some pussy. Let's keep it real. Like Zoro looked like he has some really good sex. And when you look at you look at that and you see 
Ryuma just take the sword and say, I believe it's the Shishui, he says, this sword is going to do really well with you as his master. And Zoro takes the sword and you see Ryuma just disintegrating. And you see the shadow go back to Brook and then Zoro looks at Brook and says, I'm keeping the sword, but let's just pretend this fight never happens. And he acknowledges Brook as being a swordsman. That was so crazy and it's very fitting to me that Brooke gets the shadow back so we know that he's joining the crew but Zoro, the guy who I feel is the second in command, the vice captain, uh, the fact that you got Zoro acknowledging his power and acknowledging him as a fellow swordsman. Oh, that is, that is so beautiful, man, because those two can have a sense of camaraderie that nobody else in the straw has to be able to understand nobody and it means that when they get into sticky situations you can see these two back to back supporting each other that's really cool and the fact that we saw one of the straw hats have their shadows taken back to you know given back to them means that we're going to continue to see this so i kind of have my hopes up that we're going to see luffy zombie take out uh the straw hats because it would give us the opportunity where Luffy has gotten to confrontation with every member in his crew, even as with his, uh, even with the zombie. That because I feel like one of the things that Oda's doing with Luffy is everyone's following him, but at the same time, because they all have their hopes and dreams. And in the first One Piece uh, opening, one of the things you hear is like, uh, "Come along, all your hopes and dreams." And the thing is, is it's so fitting because. They're going to diverge at some point and they're going to have to exchange blows. They're going to have to argue. It's just like being in a relationship. You know, not everything is all peaches and creams. You got to work on it, you know, like to get personal, like with me and with my sister. You know, we don't always see eye to eye. It's sometimes I know I just drive her crazy. I know that she definitely drives me crazy at times. But because there's a willingness to communicate and because we understand that, like, we're both a work in progress, you know, whenever, you know, we have those moments where we have the dust up, we're able to move past it, though there is a period where there is some some resentment, and it's because you're growing, and I feel like that's one of the interesting things about One Piece is that Luffy's continuously growing as a uh, leader, and you're seeing it in his interactions with his crewmates, so I'm, I'm really interested to see Luffy's reaction to his zombie beating up on his crewmates. I'm really interested to see that. But overall, this is a really good chapter, though, man. My chapter question to you guys is, if you were Zoro, would you have given the sword back or would you have kept it? I'll be honest with you. I would have kept the damn sword. Because I'm a firm believer, you know, to the victor goes the spoils of war. But, as always, guys, if you like anything I have to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, guys. Have an awesome day.